pleasure to have you in the studio this Th morning. Thanks for having me. Yep. Um, you've taken music very seriously from a young age. Did you yeah. kind of know you were always going to be a musician? I knew from, from probably age five that uh, the only thing that I wanted to do was make music. That's it. And what sort of instruments were you playing at the time? I played guitar for many, many years and, uh, and then drums and uh, played harmonica, played saxophone and uh, I ended up playing gu a keyboard piano. So you've sort of done pretty much the entire, well, all the basics, if you like. Yes, I have. And, uh, I, you know, and the uh, last thing was uh, I could play them very well and I ended up making records alone, you know. You didn't need anybody else? No. <laughs> what was it like growing up within the politics of the day? Because obviously you grew up yeah. through apartheid, you were very close to the epicentre yeah. of that in Pretoria. What was that like for you and how did that affect your career? You know, the townships were very close communities and uh, we taught each other all these things. And uh, when I wanted to uh, learn music professionally, you know, to read and write, uh, that's when I discovered my first taste of real apartheid, when I was refused entry into a conservatory because of color. Mm. And, uh, but that never deterred me and I went and taught myself and, uh, you know, uh, classical guitar, you know, self-taught and wrote my grades uh, to, you know, a university level. And, uh, yeah. So, had that not happened and you'd have gone to the Conservatoire, where do you think your kind of music would have gone? Do you think you'd have ended up where you are now or, or what? You know, I've always had a, a vision of what I wanted to be and what I, what, what I want to do, you know, and uh, I think uh, by getting that little knowledge of, of you know, of, 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 of uh, reading and writing music was uh, to steer myself in the, the direction that, that I've always envisaged. Musically, sort of what genre, what pathway have you sort of gone through? Because we've sort of talked yeah. about being part of the Quieto dance music. Yeah. We've touched on, on uh, sort of more traditional work with the Pretoria Conservatoire. Yeah. You've ended up in jazz. So what, what was that pathway? Well, I grew up in... in, in uh, Pretoria has always been known as the home of jazz. You know, and I grew up uh, uh, listening to jazz. Jazz was the only music that I, you know, that I, you know, I've had and listened to. Uh, American jazz and South African jazz. We had big names uh, uh, from from the area that I come from. Um, Philip Taban was one of the greatest uh, artists that South Africa has produced back in the 50s, 60s. And he actually, you know, there's a big known story that uh, when uh, he went to the States, um, Myers asked him to perform with him, you know, and, uh, you know. But you had the sort of Sakile image part of your career. Yes. That was a bit of a detour away from jazz? It, it, Sakila was uh, a fusion jazz based group, fusion, you know, fusing South African jazz and American jazz. And uh, my departure from there went into the pop industry. And uh, that's when uh, Tony Visconti, you know, uh, heard about this African band that played heavy metal you know, in the 80s. And and somehow, he, somehow, in spite of all of that, you still came back to jazz. Absolutely. And jazz has always been, you know, and most of the guys in that band now are, are based in the US or playing jazz. Uh, some musicians sort of say that making the transition into jazz is actually quite difficult. Was it because jazz has always been part of your kind of DNA, if you like, that uh, yeah. you didn't have that Absolutely. as an issue? Yeah, we, we started as, as jazz musicians, but uh, we didn't put boundaries. So it was you easy for us. Other... Yes, it was easy for us to listen to Deep Purple and those bands and so man this is where we, you know we can find real inspiration you know in terms of playing and different you know uh, fusing with the African feel into the whole thing and it has always been that you know with us. Latest album Afro Chopin. Yeah. A bit more fusion? What, what is it? <laughs> Why call it that? Because uh, Chopin's music has not has never been Africanized before. As right. No one has you know, what I've done with the melodies, I've taken the melodies, you know, uh, put them in the front, performed the melodies with a band, as a band setting, not as a piano setting only. But not, you're not band. kind of traditional African music, this no, is your not, kind of jazz take it's on It's mainly South African jazz, which we call Marabi and, and uh, 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 Quela, which is made famous by Huma Sikela, Miriam Makeba, mm. and uh, a lot of people have had it on, on, on Paul Simon. That's that. Yeah. yeah, so you, people would recognise the kind of the theme of it, the It is very exciting music. I mean, I, it, the way it came out, obviously, for me, I mean, as, 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 a, as a jazz musician. Because I find jazz can be a little bit exclusive rather than inclusive. Uh, but 
you been builders taking the scary out of jazz and, and making it accessible to everyone. Is that something you intended to do? Or? Yes, that's what I intended to do, to bring more audience to listen to, to the jazz. I think I've, I've introduced a lot of people with this album to classical music, to, uh, uh, to show a music of Chopin. And it doesn't have to be... Yeah, it doesn't have to be uh, people sitting in, 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 in a concert form or whatever to, to enjoy the music of Chopin. You can enjoy it anywhere, wherever you, you, know, you feel music is... You know, it's, it's Very little time. Yeah. You're going to be performing in the UK. What's yes. that going to be like for you? And when well, and where? Well, I'm, I'm performing on the 5th at the 606 and the, the 7th and the 8th at the Verdict and the 11th at the St. James. Uh, what's next for you then? Another genre? I don't know, I think so. <laughs> you know, with, with uh, being a creative person, you never know where, what the, you know, the next step is going to be, you know, until you're there. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, the album, Afro Chopin, will be very successful for you. And uh, good luck with the tour as well. Uh, Don Lackett, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And hopefully Thanks we'll see you again me. soon.